When you're building a team, who do you bring on first? Where do you even start? All that and more coming up on this episode of James Wedmore TV. This week's question of the week comes from YouTube user, I wanna get married. And their question is, James, it's obvious that you have a team to help you with your video production, but I'm just starting out and I can't afford to hire a team yet. If I were to bring on a person to help me, what position should it be to start out? A behind the camera person or someone in my admin space? Well, I want to get married since I don't know your first name. This is a great question. Uh, and so if anyone is looking to expand beyond themselves, we kind of need to choose who do we go after first? Who do we bring on to our team? Because I'm gonna say right now, trying to do this all alone is one of the hardest things in the world to do. Even if you're just starting out and you don't think you have the money, you need to start letting go or outsourcing or getting resourceful as quickly as possible. And the magic word here obviously is leverage. Leverage the time, energy, and manpower of other people to help you grow your business. There's just far too much to be done. You can't do it all yourself. So where do you start? I actually wouldn't recommend, if you're just starting out and you're just about to hire that first person, to have that be a camera person. Here's why. It's rather easy to get started making videos by yourself or with whatever equipment you have lying around. An iPhone, a webcam, etc. And all you need to do is recruit a friend, loved one, or little Billy down the street, you know, that super smart, wicked kid that knows way more about technology than all of us, and get them to help you, whether it's because you're gonna buy their lunch or, you know, pay them a couple bucks under the table. Get someone you know to help you with that. When it comes to bringing someone on your team, I would definitely start on more of the admin side or the day-to-day -day tasks. And there's two things I want you to do here. The first thing is to really look at the things in your business that you're doing, that you're either A, avoiding because you're dreading doing it, or you are doing it and it's just killing your time and your energy. Things that you know are imperative, they're essential, they're important, but they don't need to be done by you. If you were to give yourself an hourly wage of let's say $100 an hour, could this task be done by someone for far less than 100 an hour? And most of the times the answer is yes. Things like scheduling in your calendar or emailing back and forth between clients and stuff like that can be outsourced, can be done by someone, and doesn't need to be done by you. Now the other thing I want you to do is take any type of strength finding test to learn more about you, yourself, and where you flourish, where you're in that flow state, and the, the, the things and the habits and the activities that you do that totally drain you. Now for me, where I really just, my eyes were totally open and my mind was blown, was uh, when I first discovered Myers-Briggs and the MBTI, Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Test. And this is really what I use at the core for myself and my business and even my personal life to learn more about who I am, why I tick, what helps me thrive, and what drains my energy. Now, I have put together a video, uh, which we'll put like right here, somewhere on the page. And you can click on that and that's kind of a little assessment that I've put together uh, so you can identify what your Myers-Briggs type is. There's 16 to choose from. And as soon as you find out who you are, what your personality type is, you can actually go in and see what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And let me tell you, you want to avoid doing things that are considered your weaknesses. You don't, it's not about lifting up those weaknesses and get, getting better at the things that you're just not naturally good at. You wanna find other people that are naturally good at those things so you can focus on your strengths, right? Pretty self-explanatory. So there you have it. Start with someone in the admin space if we wanna use, I wanna get married's uh, lingo here. Someone who can help you with the day-to-day -day activities. And yes, when you get to a level where you can see an ROI from your videos, you can see when new leads are coming in, how many new leads each video brings, how many new sales a new video brings, well then it makes sense to pay others to help you improve the quality of your videos. Start with where you are now and always, always be focusing on growing and taking things to the next level. Thanks so much for watching this video. Guys, make sure to subscribe and put your questions for a future video in that little box below.
Still trying to figure out all this YouTube and social media stuff? Well, I got you covered. Click the link below to download my latest guide, the YouTube Traffic Report, to finally give you a clear-cut strategy for online success with video. When you're building a team, who do you bring on first? That question and more coming up on this episode of James Webmore TV. Bye 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 bye. bye. <laughs> this week's question of the week comes from YouTube user I want to get married. Oh, that, I can't write. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. The answer's coming your way. <laughs> Whoa, we didn't cut. 